Hi, this is Steve Selig, founder of Fit Test, and in this short video, part two on post-exercise hypotension, I'm going to just take you through a couple of my case studies, including one non-responder. So just um, to revise what I put in part one, and I'm not gonna spend much time on this because you just need to go back to part one. But the point about um, lowering blood pressure in response to exercise, which is a desirable outcome for people with hypertension, in other words, people with high blood pressure. So it's a very desirable, fast acting outcome that persists for hours is that we get this persistent vasodilatation after various forms and, uh, of exercise and, and uh, intensities, durations, which I did cover in part one of this. I'm not gonna redo that here. So this persistent vasodilatation is responsible for a drop in, in uh, blood pressure uh, post-exercise, which is a desirable outcome for those with hypertension. So just to show, how that uh, works. I'm just gonna take you over to the recovery. In recovery, um, uh, heart rate drops back to the pre-exercise levels very fast, uh, as does uh, stroke volume. And we, but we get this persistent fall in peripheral resistance. In other words, the resistance of the peripheral blood vessels to blood flow, allowing more blood flow uh, or easier blood flow into the uh, periphery post-exercise. And this has the effect of reducing the blood pressure demand of the heart, so we get a drop in blood pressure. Uh, for non-responders, that doesn't happen, and they um, return quickly to an increase in um, proof of resistance that they have at rest, as do many people with hypertension. Uh, they have this at rest, and this uh, produces a um, an increase in blood pressure uh, and, and um, a failure to uh, drop blood pressure in response to that exercise stimulus. So have a look at part one uh, to get further explanations on, on this uh, notion and there's a reference down the bottom. So just to take you through uh, two of my case studies, the first one is a person who responded really well to post-exercise hypo, hypotension and this person is on two antihypertensive medications. Anything ending in LOL is, or usually is a beta blocker. Anything ending in Sartan is usually an angiotensin receptor blocker. I haven't listed all the medications for this person, just the antihypertension uh, medications. So pre-exercise, this person's uh, blood pressure was just a bit over 160 systolic and about uh, just under 100, I think, for diastolic. Uh, we then did um, just five minutes of moderate intensity exercise and you can see the blood pressures there. And then in, we followed um, this person for at least 10 minutes post-exercise and pleasingly uh, blood pressure, uh, systolic blood pressure fell to about 140 from above 160 and diastolic pressure fell a little bit and also the narrowing of the pulse pressure. Now I won't talk about the narrowing of the pulse pressure but this is also a very good outcome. I will talk about this in another uh, video in this series, particularly on the uh, central uh, blood pressures. I'll talk about that in another video. Now, the non-responder uh, was a person with treatment-resistant hypertension. And the first thing you can see is that this person was on five anti-hypertension medications, including a beta blocker, atenolol, herbicidin again, Diltiazem, which is a calcium channel blocker. And then some of the drugs, um, well, a medication class that I see quite often in people with treatment resistant hypertension are centrally acting antihypertensives. And they usually are either moxonidine or physiotens or could be on clonidine. And then a fifth drug, hydrochlorothiazide, which works in the kidneys to inhibit uh, sodium uh, reabsorption and therefore sodium chloride and water go out through the urine, thereby decreasing the fluid load. And I won't go over how this drug works, but it, it is used in um, uh, use for hypertension, but also used for congestive heart failure, chronic heart failure. Now, the, this person's response uh, to uh, exercise, we used a slightly different protocol. 
but the the starting blood pressure was quite similar to what we had for the responder. That's not always the case, of course. That was just a coincidence. But with the levels of exercise, which weren't particularly uh, high, they were definitely moderate intensity exercise that we used, and, and blood pressure went up steeply during exercise, which is already a bit of a red flag, uh, and then um, um, got to about 2.30 in this form of exercise, the mode of exercise we used, in recovery, we certainly saw a fall in blood pressure, but even after nearly 30 minutes of tracking the blood pressure, the, it had not fallen below the pre-exercise level. So I interpret this as a non-responder. So this is my practice data using moderate to high intensity exercise with the view to engendering or promoting post-exercise hypotension. And I've given more information in part one of this video series, so you can look at that. So for people with high to very high blood pressures on arrival, most of them, the vast majority of them, have had a really good response to post-exercise hypotension. This particular client is in this red dot here, and I've got another client that I haven't presented here. So these are the non-responders, and both of them, uh, had treatment-resistant hyper, hypertension with polypharmacy. In most cases, uh, treatment-resistant hypertension, we see four to five medications used to try to get on top of high blood pressure. So these um, two clients here, including the one I've just discussed on the previous slide, are uh, these red dots. So that's just a brief uh, couple of case studies. One worked beautifully and one didn't work for post-exercise uh, hypotension. I strongly recommend that you try uh, the technique. I've given you the techniques in part one of the video, so go back and have a look at part one if you want more information. You can also contact me on info at myfittest.com.au. So have a great day and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye for now.